This video corresponds to Lecture 1 in Trefethen and Bao on matrix vector multiplication. Of course, to do numerical linear algebra, we have to do linear algebra. And the basis of linear algebra is matrix vector multiplication, usually written as Ax equals b. Now, to actually compute Ax equals b, let's assume that A is an m by n matrix, meaning, of course, that it has m rows and n columns. So, of course, this is an operation we can easily do. For example, This is a 2 by 3 matrix. If we have a 3 vector x, we expect to be able to compute b, a 2 vector, as 4, 0, 14 is 18, and 3, 0, 8 is 11. Of course, Ax equals b is something we can compute easily by hand for small examples, but if we want to program a computer, we have to really understand what's happening piece by piece. So let's suppose that since A is an m by n matrix, that it has entries like this, A11 up to A1, let's see. So it has M rows and N columns, so this must be A1N. And then A21 up to A2N, and so on to AM1 up to AMN. So the first index tells you which row the element is in, and the second index tells you which column the element is in. So a generic element here is a, i, j. Therefore, uh, b would take the form b1 up to b, m, and x would take the form x1 up to x, n, and we can compute the elements of b uh, in a straightforward way by writing down the dot product. So bi is, well I want to take say the ith row of the matrix A and dot it with the vector x, so I have to count from 1 up to n and take in the ith row, take that jth entry and multiply it by the jth entry of x and add them up. So of course you've seen this formula many times and have applied it countless times uh, with hand arithmetic. One thing I want to point out that you might not have thought about is how difficult this process actually is in terms of number of operations. So I have to multiply, for each i, I have to multiply aij by xj, and j runs from 1 to n. So this operation for a single bi requires n multiplications. And then we have to add those up. Now, it looks like it's another n, but actually it's n minus 1 additions. Because, of course, to add together two numbers, I need to add once. To add together three numbers, I need two plus signs, and so on. So to add together n numbers here, I need n minus 1 additions. So overall, I have to do two n minus 1 steps of arithmetic. To compute each bi. And of course, then I have to do that for each i from 1 to m. As you know from linear algebra, when we write ax equals b, when we think about x and b as being vectors, we often think about a as being a transformation or a function or a map 
whose input is x and whose output is b. So we think about a as being the operation, x as being the input, and b as being the output. But there's another way of thinking about this, which is often very beneficial geometrically and computationally. So let's think about a not so much as being a function comprised of coefficients, but rather as a list of vectors. So the first column of a is a1, the second column of a is a2, and so on. The nth column of a is a n. Each of these vectors, each a i vector is uh, in either r m or c m, depending if we're using real or complex numbers. And that means it's the same length as the vector b. It lives in the same space as b. So one way we can write this is when we write, say, the vector b, well, let's see here. So I can write this as a1 a2 dot 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 a n and then times the vector of coefficients x1 x2 up to x n. And if you think about how matrix multiplication works, I'm taking each of these objects and scaling it by these numbers. So I could rewrite this in the following way. This is the number x1 times the vector a1. And this is the number x2 times the vector a2. And so on xn times the vector an. So in this sense, I'm thinking of not of a as being the function and x as being the input, but rather as uh, x as being the function, or at least some sort of operation, acting on a list of inputs a1 through an. So in other words, we are constructing the vector b out of the columns of the matrix a by choosing the coefficients x. The reason for this level of abstraction is that we can really think about the idea of the image or the range or, as we will call it, the column space of the matrix A. So let's define the range of A to be all vectors b that can be obtained as b equals ax for some x. By the previous discussion about working on the columns of a, this is the same thing as all vectors b that occur as linear combinations of the columns of the matrix A. So this is why the idea of an image or range and column space are the same thing, because the operation of matrix multiplication, thinking of an input X being mapped to an output B, is actually the same thing as asking if I choose different coefficients x to build a linear combination of the columns of the matrix, what can I possibly get? For example, in the previous uh, 2 by 3 matrix, we might ask what is the range of the matrix A? Well, it's clearly a, sub, a subspace of R2, or if we're working over the complex numbers over C2, because the output is a two vector. So it's some space in, in R2. Uh, we know it's a subspace because it's the span of something. It's the span of the columns of A. So by definition, um, the, the, the range or the column space is the span of the columns of A. So it's the, in this case, the range of A 
is the span, and I'll use an angle bracket like this to denote a span of some vectors, of 4, 3, 2, 1, and 7, 4. Now in fact, in this case, you can see just by inspection and your own experience with row operations that, say, the first two vectors, 4, 3, and 2, 1, are already independent. Right? If you row reduce this, you can get onto Andy, 1, 0, 0, 1. So that tells me that these two vectors are independent, uh, and they're, you know, and, and they, they span all of our two already. So in fact, this span of these three vectors, the third one, say, is not necessary. The first two already span the entire space. The span is all of our two. The other key idea for a matrix A is the idea of a null space or kernel. So the kernel of A are the inputs x such that Ax equals 0. So often we think about this as, what are the inputs that give the output zero if I think about A as being a function or being a map? But based on the discussion of columns uh, in the previous slides, we can also say this as, these are the, so the kernel of A are the coefficients, x1 through xn, that build a linear combination of the columns of A to make zero. In other words, how many different ways and what are the ways I can combine the columns of A to make the zero vector? Of course, something you know is that if there is only one way namely x1 through xn equals all zeros, we say, we say that um, A is, what's the word? Non-singular. If it's a square matrix, or more generally, we just say injective for a non-square matrix. So that comment about the column space or the range and the kernel or the null space of a matrix, that leads us to the fundamental theorem of linear algebra about the rank and the nullity of a matrix, and then about invertibility and all the different properties of matrices. Before we do that though, I want to demonstrate how to do these computations on a computer, simply matrix multiplication, and really how we represent um, matrices in a computer, especially using Python. So first of all, mathematically, we have a matrix A, which has entries A11, A12, up to A1n, and that's a row, right? And when we read it left as a human, we usually read it left to right, and then go down to the second row, A21, A22, up to A2n as a row, and then we continue up to Amn. So we need a way to represent this in a computer, and one thing about computer memory is it's essentially linear, and so we need a way to break this up into reasonable pieces. So for example, if I say that A is the matrix 4, 2, 7, 3, 1, 4, Well, of course, the way I read that off verbally was 4, 2, 7, 3, 1, 4. So in a computer, we want to somehow have a way of representing these numbers. And we want to then tell a computer that the first three numbers make a row, and the second three numbers make a row, and you want to put those rows in that order to make a matrix. So in the next quick video, I'll do this in Sage, or in Python, rather, and uh, using Sage MathCell to demonstrate how we use NumPy the Python package for fast array manipulation to uh, work with matrices and vectors.